No, again, it was for crude political purposes to hang on to power, despite the DUP's record on things like climate change, gay rights, etc. So Theresa May is now Madam Mayor. Without the majority she felt she was going to get, without the mandate she demanded to go into the Brexit negotiations, and with a government in conflict and chaos. And with the UK in a very weak and unstable position, a lot worse than we were before, so far as negotiations with the other EU countries are concerned. Now, I've never said this before, Madam Mayor, but I agree with George Osborne. I agree with him when he said on the television a few days later that Theresa May is a dead woman walking. And as far as I'm concerned, I could be proved wrong. I doubt whether the Tories would ever allow Theresa May, May to lead them into the next general election, whatever it is. Mind you, when you look at the other people like Michael Gold and Boris Johnson, please, none of them. Now, Theresa May, during the election, said she was going to offer a strong and stable government compared to the alternative of a coalition of chaos. The minority conservative government is not strong or stable, it's a lot weaker than it was before, and it's now beholden to the demands of 10 MPs in Northern Ireland. And at the same time, the Tories are even prepared to jeopardise the Good Friday Agreement purely to cling on to power, and that is an absolute disgrace. And there's one lesson to be learned, Madam Mayor, from the general election on the 8th of June, it is that the public, including the voters in Will, totally reject the cruel and unfair austerity policies implemented by the Tory government. Vital public services need to be funded and they need to be protected. And I think the public will understand that. The voters, yeah, I'll finish now about a bit. The voters have clearly rejected the Tory government. I wasn't sure before time when the next election was going to be. Councillor Adrian Jones has announced tonight it's in October. So we are, and I'm confident the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn will win the next election outright. Thank you, Madam Mayor.
overall government debt down to 1.7 trillion. Paying interest on that debt already costs more than educating our children and almost as much as defence, and that is with interest rates at historic lows. An internal Labour Party reporter to write in Ed Miliband lost the election concluded that the Tories' trial was not in spite of austerity but because of it. Labour lost because voters did not see would cut the deficit. So you would wonder why voters who two years ago rejected Labour's spending plans would now seem to accept Jeremy Corbyn's court irresponsible plans. One reason was Theresa May's failure to provide proper costings in her manifesto and so allowed Jeremy Corbyn to get away with promising largesse to various parts of the electorate without proper scrutiny. Had it been applied, the size of Labour's tax bombshell might have focused minds. The argument is there. Corporation tax rates have plunged, yet UK companies are paying more tax than ever before. The 50p rate of income tax was abolished, and as a result, the highest paid of shareholder and ever larger share of tax burden. Labour, for all their better and top top Tory tax cuts for the richest, never introduced a higher rate of tax during the 13 years of government until the end of their tenure. Was this because they also knew that instead of increasing tax revenue, it would decrease it? And was the economic argument in that? Since the cut started, eight jobs have been created in the private sector for every public sector role shared. The point about Tory reforms is that they were progressive. Welfare reform was tough but helped so many back into work that the incomes of the lowest paid were as fast as possible. Conservative reforms led to record employment, with unemployment at a 40 year low and forced inequality to a 30 year low. Crime was the lowest since surveys began, not by for a nation that is supposedly in crisis. Jeremy Corbyn has presented himself as a non political force using the old street of the book, Brian and Peter with their own money, where it took Gordon around a decade to run the book to finance his Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonald would achieve that in months, spending and borrowing his way to even prices. Youth turned out to 72% of the selection was far higher than in 1997, which was 58%. How serious is the impact on the result is debatable? With Jeremy Corbyn, you have some words to your citizens. As far as Scotland said about you, they are cynical with dialects and they have not seen much wickedness. Creating them because they have not often been perceived and optimistic that they are not often experienced failure. They are not worn down by life and they have not by constraints. They feel worthy of great things and high hopes. And prefer doing what is noble to their own interest because they don't live by calculation but by character. They think they know everything but being innocent, they are compassionate, believing everyone to be honest. Easy me to express your mind. I can just say there is a social justice case for tuition fees. Scrapping fees are on tuition and put them out to a massive bump to the middle classes. What is progressive about having someone stacking supermarket shelves subsidised at Oxbridge Lord Bridge as a future commercial QC?
bloody mad, that is an excellent book. I can commend it to this king. Inheritance in public policy. Changed without Tracy Britain by Professor Richard Bruce and a Philip L. Davis. <laughs>
climate change, probably the biggest issue facing us at a global level. Bringing us home to our council, given all the virtue signaling over environmental issues of the DUP, Madam Mayor, I always struggle to understand why our own council's environmental pledges seem to ignore protecting our environment or tackling climate change in any way. We on this side have called for the council to look towards becoming energy self-sufficient in the last two budgets, and yes, this, this was not picked up by the Labour administration as both the potential for long-term savings, nor as the right thing to do. Also, these will be the last committee papers I will be receiving as I have asked committee services to stop sending paper copies. I was shocked last week to find out that tonight's meeting alone is costing the council approximately £1,500 in production and distribution of paper agendas, not to mention the environmental costs. So I urge others to, I urge others to join in ditching the papers. Madam Mayor, I believe that people are growing wary of austerity, of the measures put in place to restore Britain's economy after the last Labour government and the economic crash of 2008. I was glad to see the last month four bankers faced lengthy jail sentences for the parts they played in the crisis, and I hope that more face justice in the future. I also hope that, hope that the government do listen to the independent pay review bodies and look to support those in the public sector who have played their part in uh, restoring our economic success. We have raised many of the lowest paid out of tax, and we have increased the minimum wage. Clearly, there is more to do. Madam Mayor, I do know that Wirral is playing its part in raising public sector pay by recruiting senior officers at salaries above that of the private estate. Perhaps if they instead had to pay our social workers more, we wouldn't have the problem of spiraling in agency fees. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Two things is it seems to be